Good day. In this video presentation, you will gain different ways on how the companies use forecasting and you will gain relevant details about its common features. The different steps and different approaches that may be used for forecasting will be covered in this video presentation. Moreover, the different users of forecasting techniques will be introduced as well so you will be knowledgeable with different aspects of forecasting. In connection with that, let me remind you for a moment with one of the most famous and unforgettable disasters in history. I know that you are familiar with the history of Titanic. It is known as one of the biggest peacetime maritime disasters in history. But in this video, let us use this unforgettable history as a meaningful illustration of the main topic which is all about forecasting. Forecasting is the process of predicting the future of the company based on the past and present data and most commonly by analysis of trends. So what do you think is the connection of Titanic history to the discussion of forecasting? Let us see some of the speculations about the sinking of Titanic. There are different speculations about the sinking of Titanic. We all know that based on the first reason, Titanic sank due to collision with an iceberg. But a lot of studies have made by different experts about the real score why the RMS Titanic really sank. According to different published materials, Titanic has a lot of things that can satisfy to the passengers. There are a lot of cigarettes and alcoholic drinks in the ship. Sounds good right? Some speculations claim that Titanic wasn't really sank due to iceberg but because of some reasons. But I want to highlight the thing that really caught my attention. Richard Corfield writes in a physics world retrospective on the disaster that, binoculars that could have been used by lookouts on the night of the collision were locked up aboard the ship, and the key was held by David Blair, an officer who was bumped from the crew, before the ship's departure from Southampton. Some historians have speculated that the fatal iceberg might have been spotted earlier if the binoculars were in use. Now, I want to highlight that this speculation has somewhat similar to what we will be talking on, the forecasting. If the management of the ship use the binocular during that moment, they will see the possible tragedy that the Titanic will be facing. Then, through that, they can be able to make the supposedly plans to avoid that tragedy. Aside from that, Another speculation is that there were too few lifeboats, perhaps the biggest tragedy is that there were not enough lifeboats to accommodate all of the Titanic's more than 2,200 passengers and crew members. The lifeboats could accommodate only about 1,200 people. This means that the management of the ship did not forecasted the volume of passengers versus number of their lifeboats. A sad reality for Titanic and a lesson for us that a good forecast can be helpful to redirect the possible failure of the organization. So, I want you to remember this. Business operations is like a Titanic, if the operations manager fails to have a good forecast, the business organization will have a predisposition to fail. Let us begin with the discussion of forecasting. Forecasting pertains to planning of future sales, earnings, revenue, cost, and other variables that can be used to help the firm's operation. It is basically the starting point of planning stage of the organization whatever industry they belong. Businesses apply forecasting to regulate the allocation of their budgets or plan for anticipated expenses for an upcoming period of time. This is typically based on the projected demand for the goods and services offered. When we say projected demand, it is the process of identifying the potential buyers out of the population. Budget and expenses of the organization basically depends on the computed projected demand. Thus, forecasting is very essential for the company. Misallocation of budget and poor plans for anticipated expenses will be avoided by the company if there is a good forecast conducted. Take note that the primary objectives and goals of forecasting is that to reduce the risk or the uncertainty that the firm may face and to match the demand and supply of the industry. In the narrow sense, the objective of forecasting is to produce better forecasts. But if we will look into the highlighted terms, we can be able to conclude that the objective of forecasting is to improve organizational performance. Specifically forecasting look forward for more revenue, more profit, and increased customer satisfaction. Always remember that better forecasts, by themselves, 
are no essential value if those forecasts are ignored by management or otherwise not used to improve organizational performance. Now, let us discuss the different aspects of forecasting. There are two aspects that need to consider when doing a forecast. Expected level of demand. Degree of accuracy. Forecasting should be an integral part of the decision-making activities of management, as it can play an important role in many areas of a company including the identification of level of demand and determination of the degree of accuracy. In forecasting, some things are easier to estimate than others. The volume of buyers for a definite period of time can be forecast precisely. On the other hand, winning lotto numbers cannot be forecast with any accuracy. With that, forecasting concerns with level of demand and degree of accuracy. Some of the examples of forecast considering the level of demand. Forecast of inventory requirements. Forecast of future demand. Forecast of sales. Some of the examples of forecast considering the degree of accuracy. Forecast on the possible exchange rates. Forecast on weather conditions. Winning number of lotto. Let us discuss forecasting in accordance to different time horizon. Modern organizations require short-term, medium-term, and long-term forecasts, depending on the specific application. Short-term forecasts are needed for the scheduling of personnel, production, and transportation. As part of the scheduling process, forecasts of demand are often also required. Medium-term forecasts are needed to determine future resource requirements, in order to purchase raw materials, hire personnel, or buy machinery and equipment. Long-term forecasts are used in strategic planning. Such decisions must take account of market opportunities, environmental factors, and internal resources. There are two uses of forecasts wherein managers are able to plan the system and plan the use of the system. Planning the system particularly involves long-range forecasts wherein it tackles the innovation of product and services, what equipment and facilities needed as well as the location. For instance, company ABC aims to innovate their existing products based on the preference of the customers. With that, the company needs to forecast the possible demand of the innovated products as well as the preferences of the customers. With this given example, the company must plan the whole system. Planning the use of the system pertains to the short-range forecasts such as inventory, purchasing, as well as workloads and assignments, production, budgeting, and scheduling. In addition, forecasting is also used in different areas such as profit prediction, revenue and cost, prices, raw materials, interest rates, inflation rate and other key areas in economics. Moving forward, the following are the different users of forecasting. Top Management Forecasting is very essential to top management of the company. Commonly they use it for long-range planning, implementation of the long-range strategic purpose and also for the capital budgeting resolution. Forecasting technique is a useful tool for the top management to have basis for every decision that they will take for the company. Production Manager Forecasting is useful for production managers most specially when they regulate the volume of raw materials needed by the production. They are also using forecasting for them to set competitive budget to make the production process efficient. In some ways, forecasting is also the means of production managers to schedule the production activities, monitoring of stock level and to address the possible delays in terms of shipment or delivery. Purchasing Manager Price of the commodities and raw materials are constantly changing in the market. This is the reason why purchasing managers are utilizing forecasting techniques to predict the possible procurement of the materials for a particular period. Marketing Manager Sales forecast is the common type of prediction that the marketing manager is doing. In connection with that, the marketing managers consider the use of forecasting to plan the future advertising and promotion that may affect the sales forecast of the company in the long run. Finance Manager One of the functions of financial manager is to source funds that may suit for the projects of the company. They should also forecast the possible performance of the investment in the financial market. In doing such functions, 
the financial managers are utilizing forecasting techniques so they can be able to conclude for the better investment decision. Human Resource Manager Manpower requirement is very important factor in order for the company to achieve its ultimate goals and objectives. Thus, the HR manager needs forecasting for them to identify the suitable workforce for the job positions. Colleges and Universities To ascertain potential enrollees in a school year, forecasting is highly needed by the colleges and universities. The figure on hand helps regulate the revenues to be attained from tuition fees, the faculty to be hired, the planning of room assignments, and building of facilities. These are the different users of forecasting. Let us move on to the discussion of good forecast elements. There are various forecasting techniques that are used by different organizations, and some of them have different approaches to each other. However, there are commonalities to all types of techniques and it is significant to know these features that are in common. Forecasting techniques generally assume that all are in the same underlining reasons or causes that existed in the past and will eventually continue to exist in the future. Forecast is not a perfect prediction of what will happen in the future, actual result will be realized when it happens and will definitely different with what is the predicted value. The existence of randomness prohibits perfect forecast. Therefore, there's a need for allowances in the forecast to anticipate errors. Forecast is more accurate from groups or items than individuals because forecasting errors between items in a group frequently have a terminating effect. Prospects for groupings may arise if one raw material is can be used for more than one product or services. The accuracy of forecasting decreases when the time period covers by the forecast increases. For short-range forecasts there are fewer uncertainties than long-range forecasts, so it can be seen that short-range forecasts are more accurate than long-range. This time, let us discuss the different elements of the good forecast. A good forecast should consist of the following elements. Timely. Forecast should be timely. It must be allotted by time so that the accuracy of the forecast will increase. The capacity cannot be lengthened overnight, nor the level of inventories cannot be changed immediately. The time horizon for this forecast must be indicated for the implementation of these changes. Accurate. The importance of forecast in business operations most specifically in decision-making process is well acknowledged. A good forecast enable the users to detect any errors and to plan ahead. This can also provide comparative or alternative forecast. Reliable. The forecast must be reliable, the consistency of the forecast must be considered. It is important to have a commonality and provide good forecast as always, sometimes many users are burned out because of the issuance of a new forecast when the first one has been issued already to them. Meaningful units. The forecast must be conveyed in meaningful units. The choices of the units that will be used are sole choice of whomever the user of the forecast. For instance, Financial managers need to know how many pesos will be needed to finance on something, production managers needs to know how many units will be produced, and human resources managers needs to know how many people or workers should be hired for a particular project. In writing. The forecast must be in writing. Generally, not all concerned parties are using the same forecasts however it is necessary to write down the forecasts for the purpose of evaluating it once the actual results are in. Simple to understand and use. The forecast and technique to be used must be simple to understand and use. Normally, users of the forecasts tend to have lack of confidence when using sophisticated techniques. They don't understand why some techniques are used. Using wrong techniques can be troublesome to users and may have consequences. It is advisable to have a simple techniques in forecasting because of users are more comfortable in working with it. Cost effective. The forecast must be cost efficient. The benefits of the forecasts should be more than the costs of doing it. In order to obtain the good forecast, the managers should consider the following steps. First, the users of forecasting should determine the purpose of the forecast. In this step, there is a need for identifying the important indicator and detailed requirements in the forecast such as personnel, time, and money involved or other unit of measurement. 
right after the identification of the purpose, they need to establish a time horizon. Time horizon pertains to the specific timeline needed for forecasting. Like what we have mentioned a while ago, forecast accuracy will be lessened if the time horizon of the forecast increases. Next process is obtaining, cleaning, and analyzing the appropriate data. Acquiring irrelevant and significant data can add value to the forecast. Thus, the managers should consider these activities to deliver them to a good forecast. The next one is the selection of forecasting techniques. There are many sophisticated techniques in forecasting, however, it is necessary to choose which techniques will be comfortable for the stakeholders and users of the forecast. Next to that is making a forecast. Once the managers have already selected the forecasting technique that is fitted to accomplish the purpose, they should make a forecast. After that, the final process is the monitoring of the forecast. It should be done in order to determine the performance of the forecast if at least meeting a satisfactory performance level. These are the steps in forecasting process. Next is the different approaches in forecasting. Generally, there are two approaches in forecasting which are qualitative and quantitative approaches. Qualitative approach, normally, it is subjective in nature, which sometimes disregards numerical description. This forecasting method generally incorporates factors such as decision makers' intuition, emotions, personal experiences, and value system as well. It is often called judgmental forecasting. Quantitative approach, it involves projection and historical data as well as the development of associative and causal model in making forecast. It also uses mathematical model that rely on previous data. For your assignment, define the following terms. Expert opinion. Delphi method. Sales force polling. Consumer market survey. Trend projection. Naive model. Moving average. Exponential smoothing. Linear regression. Correlation coefficients. For further instruction about this assignment, kindly check out our official social learning unit. Thank you and have a pleased day.